Hi everyone, I'm Miss Tori and I'm Miss Katie with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom and we are so excited to see you all again. This is the last time that we're going to see you this school year, which makes us a little bit sad, but we are glad that you joined us today for this very exciting presentation called Right This Very Minute. So what are we going to talk about today, Miss Tori? Well, as always, we're going to learn about our favorite thing. Do you remember what that was? agriculture right and if you were here for our last two presentations you know that agriculture is everything to do with our farmers and ranchers and what they do every single day so if you remember we talked about ranchers as cowboys or cowgirls and we said that they take care of three different animals real quickly can you think of one of those three different animals that's right, cows, right? We know they take care of beef cattle that give us hamburgers and steaks and all those awesome byproducts we talked about last time. We also know that they ride what in order to go take care of their, their cattle? <laughs> That's right, a horse, right? And that last one was a little bit harder for us to guess. Last time we gave you the sound, so we'll try that again. Ready? <laughs> You're right, it's sheep, right? And we said that farmers also take care of animals, right? But they're a little different from the animals that our ranchers take care of. So what are some animals that we might find on a farm? That's pig. right, I heard a pig. Pigs, pigs, right? Of course we get bacon, ham, pork from pigs. What other animal is similar to the one that our ranchers took care of? <makes noise> That's right, dairy cows. And we know that we get milk from dairy cows and we can use that milk to make our favorite things like ice cream yep butter yogurt cheese oh so many delicious things come from our dairy cows and then we did go over one more animal can you think about what it might be we get eggs from them chickens very good you guys have a really good memory and we are going to talk about not only the animals that farmers raise but also something that they grow. What do you think that farmers grow? Do you remember? Do you guys remember what we called all the things that they grow? All of the different fruits and all of the dish, different vegetables? We called them crops. crops. Very good. Very Can good. you guys say crops? Crops. crops awesome and if you remember we listed off our favorite fruits and vegetables so we'll go ahead and give that a try real quick here if we list off a fruit that you enjoy go ahead and raise your hand nice and tall okay you ready strawberries Ooh, blackberries watermelon blueberries apples cantaloupe oranges pineapple kiwi peaches bananas oh very good and one way we remembered what was a fruit or not a fruit was what what do the fruit have in them? Seeds. Seeds. Very, Very good. good. But we also talked about vegetables because, of course, those are crops too because our farmers grow them. If you like one of the vegetables that we have named, go ahead and raise your hand. Are you ready? Ooh, okay. Carrot. Broccoli. Did cauliflower. Oh, good. Yeah, one. very good. How about lettuce? Ooh, celery. Cabbage. Asparagus. Asparagus. I love mm. those. So there are all sorts of fruits and vegetables that we get from our farmers. And of course, we also know that they grow other things that we use, like the cotton for our clothing, right? We get wheat from them to make things like pasta or bread and delicious things like that. And we're going to talk a lot about where the different things that we eat and use every day come from, because today we're talking about what farmers and ranchers do right this very minute and every minute of the day to produce those things for us. So it's very fitting that we brought one of our favorite books today to talk about that. What book is that, Miss Katie? It would be called Right This Very Minute. Very good. So we'll go ahead and pull this book up on the screen. If you could be sitting quietly crisscross applesauce with your hands on your lap, we'll get that going for you. Right This Very Minute by Liesl Detflison. What's that you say? You're hungry for breakfast? Right this very minute? Then you need a farmer. You have the stories of so many right here on your table. Right this very minute in a citrus grove 
A grower tests oranges for ripeness. When the fruit is ready, the harvesting crew will pick the oranges, which will be squeezed into the juice you drink in the morning. Right this very minute, in a new field on a wheat farm, a farmer drills furrows, the perfect depth for seeds. Your pancakes were made with wheat that was grown, harvested, and then ground into flour. Right this very minute, in a sugar bush filled with maple trees, a sugar maker replaces old collection buckets with a new tubing system to carry maple sap to a storage tank. The sap will be boiled down in evaporators until it becomes thick and sweet, like the maple syrup you poured on your pancakes. What's that you say? You'd like a snack right this very minute? Then you meet a farmer. You have the knowledge of so many right here in your hands. Right this very minute, as the sun sets on a cranberry marsh, a grower starts protecting the crop from frost. The grower will be up all night checking the sprinklers that keep the plants from freezing, all so cranberries can become part of your trail mix. Right this very minute on a southern farm, a peanut farmer installs soil sensors to make sure the fields aren't too wet or too dry. The sensors help the farmer decide when and how much to water these sensitive plants. What's that you say? It's time for lunch, right this very minute? Then you, you need a farmer. You have the hard work of so many right here in your lunchbox. Right this very minute, a dairy farmer tends the cows. The cheese in your sandwich was made with milk from cows that must be milked at least twice every day, whether it's a weekday, a Saturday, a birthday, or a holiday. Right this very minute, farmers till and test the soil for nutrients to make sure it's healthy before planting seeds that will grow into long, crunchy carrots. Right this very minute, an apple grower works with a beekeeper to bring beehives into an orchard. Hundreds of thousands of honeybees will pollinate the pale pink blossoms, helping each tree grow many bushels of apples for you to enjoy. What's that you say? You're ready for dinner right this very minute? Then you need a farmer. You have the pride of so many right here on your plate. Right this very minute, a cattle rancher moves the herd to a wide pasture to graze. She cares for the cows and welcomes their calves into the world. When the calves are old enough, they will move to new pastures or feed yards before they are harvested for the beef that will be made into hamburgers. Right this very minute, a farmer plans a crop rotation schedule to keep the soil healthy 
and grow more of the very best vegetables, like the potato you've topped with broccoli and cheese. Right this very minute, some farmers prepare produce for delivery to grocery stores and others box it up to sell at local farmers markets. Before lettuce and tomatoes ever get tossed in a salad or put on top of a hamburger, they must travel from the farm to hungry customers. What's that you say? You'd like dessert right this very minute? Then you need a farmer and sometimes a whole farming family. You have the dedication of so many right here on your fork. Right this very minute, a grower checks the weather forecast in a family-owned strawberry patch while workers help hundreds of visitors pick their own strawberries. Right this very minute, a family checks their backyard coop to make sure the chickens have enough feed and fresh water. Then, they collect eggs that get made into food, like the shortcake in your bowl. What's that you say? You want to grow your own food? Right this very minute? Then you need to think like a farmer. You can help plant a garden right here in your community. Right this very minute, you and your friends, family, and neighbors can work together to choose which crops to grow in your gardens. In a few months, you will enjoy healthy snacks and meals made with the fruits and vegetables you harvest yourselves. Every single day of every year, Farmers tend their crops, care for their animals, and work hard to feed their families and yours. Next time you eat your breakfast, snack, lunch, dinner, or dessert, remember that somewhere, right this very minute, there's a farmer to thank for your delicious food. And if someday you decide to become a farmer, right that very minute, you'll be doing your part to feed the world too. Wow, we learned about so much that our farmers and ranchers do every single minute to help us get the food that we need, the clothing we wear, and the things we use every single day. You know, I kind of like to see what some of our Arizona farmers are doing right this very minute. What about you guys? Do you want to see what our Arizona farmers are up to? All right, let's take a look at a couple of our farmers and ranchers who sent us a video of what they're doing right this very minute. Good morning, I'm Tiffany Selchow. And right this very minute, I'm on the Quarter Circle U Ranch, owned by the Backus family and managed by my husband, Jordan. And we're out here in a pasture, which we can only get to by horses. We've been riding for about an hour to get here. And right this very minute, all of these cows around us, they are using their superpowers. They're taking this forage, the dry grass, the brush, and they're converting it into a nutrient-dense protein that we get to eat and, and enjoy. Did you know that beef contains 10 essential nutrients, including zinc, iron, and protein? Hi everybody, right this very minute, I'm at our farm here, here in Dewey, which is in central Arizona, right in the middle of the state. Now, one of my favorite things that we're doing this spring is having lots of babies here. This is Wrangler, he's five days old, and he is a dwarf goat. 
Um, and he is so, isn't he cute? He's so sweet. And we get to take good care of him here. Oh, he's hungry, ready time for his bottle. Taking good care of him and all the animals here at our farm. Springtime means lots of babies. And we have goats and sheep, donkeys and horses, um, cows and even bunnies. Oh, did I say chickens? Chickens too, I always forget something. But little, little Wrangler is sure sweet. So not only do we get lots of babies happening this time of year, we also are planting all of our vegetable plants and getting our gardens ready for the year. Now at our farm, we plant tomatoes, peppers, squash, zucchini, some favorites that you know, strawberries, blackberries, sweet corn, and my all time favorite, pumpkins. So we're famous for those. And we get to grow lots of different kinds of vegetables all summer long. So it's time today to plant those vegetables in the, from seeds. And then as they, as they grow, we're gonna plant them out into our gardens and be ready for a great season of lots of harvesting of all these great vegetables. So that's what's happening here this very minute at Mortimer Farms. Hello everyone, here you are with us out at the Duncan Family Farms beet field and I'm with Courtney and Lauren. So they're gonna show us a little bit about how we grow beets. So Lauren, I'm gonna ask you, when did we plant these beets and how long does it take them to grow? So we planted these beets on September 14th um, and they've been in the ground about four months and so they're just ready to be harvested. So we have beets in all different shapes and sizes. This beet is one of our largest beets. That's a big beet. Yeah, I wonder what Courtney? other sizes we got. The little baby beets. That's a teeny out. one. Yeah. That's a teeny one. Now, Courtney's going to pull a beet out, and we're going to get surprised at what size this beet is that she's pulling out of the ground. Okay, that's a big one. That's a big one. So you can see that all the green tops are when you're in the grocery store and you see a bunched beet. All the green in the field is the tops, and then the beet that we, the portion that we eat is that root portion of the crop. We can also eat the greens too. The greens are good for you. And look, Lauren just cut it. Look at how pretty the inside. These are called badger flame beets. Gorgeous. Look so at there's color, your guys. beet lesson for the day. Thanks, Thank Lauren. You. Thanks, Courtney. Thank you. You guys have a great day. I'm Mark Rovey with Free Time Farms. And right now I'm out checking the cows and the calves. And what I'm looking for is any calves that just don't look like they're feeling that good. If their ears are droopy or their eyes aren't quite bright or they just look like something's wrong with them because the calves can't come up and tell us when they're sick. So we have to pay real close attention and watch them every day. So if we see one that doesn't look right, we can give them the antibiotics or the medicine that they need before they get sick and it causes a, a month long or two month long sickness that'll really hurt them in the end. If we can catch them the first day that they're starting to not feel good, give them a little bit of medicine, then they go right back to how they're supposed to be. So we just walk around and look at all the calves and make sure everything looks like they've been eating and, and drinking and that everybody looks healthy. Well, as you can see, our farmers and ranchers are working hard and they're doing some pretty neat things right this very minute. Yeah. Well, now we have an activity for you guys to take uh, part in. Tori, you wanna tell them a little bit about it? Yeah, so we actually brought with us some cards that will show you an item that we might use or eat. And then we want you to guess where that item came from. We'll start with one together. I know at the beginning we talked about eggs, right? Delicious eggs. I like mine scrambled. These ones happy to happen to be over medium. How do you like your eggs, Katie? Scrambled. Scrambled. Well, where do those eggs come from? Can you guess? Oh. Did you say a chicken? Very good. So we're going to match these two cards together, place them over here. Let's try a couple more before we get mm. you going on your activity. What's this? Might be hard to see, but it's one of my other breakfast favorites. Bacon. Mm -hmm. Where does bacon come from? What do you think? Guesses? That's yes. right. We've got pigs, right? So we'll pair those two together and we'll put it off to the side. Okay, now this is one of my favorites and it wasn't in the book. So you're gonna have to think really hard for this one, okay? So here I'm showing you what? 
That's right, French, French fries. fries. So where do those delicious French fries come from? Oh, well, good right. job. You guys are awesome. Of course, our um, French fries come from potatoes, mm -hmm. just like the baked potatoes in the story that we read. Great job. Very good. How about, should we do one more? Let's try another one. Let's do this one. Okay, so how about a t-shirt? Who's wearing a shirt today? Everyone, right? So, while well, you might be wearing a dress, but in any case, I bet it was made from the same material. So what do you think we use to make t-shirts? It's soft and it's white. What do you think? You got it. Cotton. Very good. So again, we're going to pair that cotton in the field with our product and place it over to the side. So we have a lot more, but we're not going to go through all of them with you because we actually sent your teachers an activity for you guys to do there in your classroom. And it's called right this very minute memory. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so not only are you going to have to try and pair the items just like we did there, but you're going to have to see if you can remember where they were in that game so that you can pair them all up and get to the very end. So again, in the game, you're going to find the product, the mm -hmm. consumer product that we eat and know. And then you're also going to match it with the source of that product. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing the memory game, you're not looking for two bacons. You're looking for a bacon mm -hmm. and a pig or maybe cheese and a dairy cow yep. might have given that one away for you, right? And we're going to go one step further because you guys were such good listeners today. We brought stickers for each of you that we gave to your teachers ahead of time. So you'll get those after this presentation. But on each sticker, there's a different item that we might enjoy. And you can wear that item and think about where it might come from. So I got pasta. Do you guys like spaghetti? Ooh. I love spaghetti and mac and cheese. And where do you think the grain inside of that pasta, where does that come from? What is it called? That was a good hint. Yeah. Grain. grain. That's right. Our pasta is made from wheat, mm -hmm. which is grown by our farmers right this very minute. Mm -hmm. Now, I happen to get my favorite food on my sticker. I'm not really sure how this worked <laughs> it out. It's out. a lucky day for me. But can anybody tell me what this is that's ice right cream. it's an ice cream cone so where does that delicious cookies and cream ice cream come from that's right it's made from the milk from our dairy cows that are being cared for every day by our arizona farmers very good so you'll get those and who liked the book that we read today Oh yeah, I'm glad you did because we actually left one of these books with each of your teachers. So you'll have it to keep as part of your classroom library and you can go back and visit the story again. Well, we enjoyed very much visiting with you today and talking about all the things our farmers and ranchers do right, right this, this very, very minute. minute. Yes.